You're watching Ramping Up Your English. This is segment two of episode 74. You just saw some highlights from a program entitled Getaway Girl about a memorable trip to Africa. Now, we're working on listening comprehension skills today, understanding an interview, and my guest is Regina Ayers, the producer of Getaway Girls. Now, Regina, I'm impressed with the photos of that segment and the way you share that experience with the, with the viewers. Let's talk about your experience with those chimpanzees. Well, um, we got to see chimpanzees twice. And, of course, uh, in the other video, we talked uh, about uh, seeing them on the island. And that was very, uh, you know, inspiring because you could see how smart they were. Um, and um, so the chimpanzees, I, I, th I think I've said in one of the clips is that I preferred the gorillas. The chimpanzees are very animated, and they're very much like human beings. They squabble, they, they fight, they run after each other. <laughs> and, uh, I think of that 99% uh, right, yeah. of the DNA we share. They are very much like human beings. And um, so I, I, I really like the chimpanzees. They were more animated. Um, and uh, you could see their personalities mm -hmm. uh, much more so than the gorillas. And that was true on the island as well as in the wild. And um, I was uh, stranded at one point because I lost my camera, oh, and yeah. the guide was uh, looking to uh, try and find my camera for me. But he left me. He left the, b both he and I went out alone into the forest, and then he left me. So I realized at one point I was standing in a forest by myself, surrounded by uh, chimpanzees and other wild creatures. And so, this is after they warned you that if they, right, if hug they escape, a tree. you go hug right, a tree. Right, you hug a tree. So I thought about that. So um, it, was, it was fascinating, the chimpanzees. And uh, we were very lucky to uh, have a great trip with National Geographic. I highly recommend that. I, I would expect they would have a really good quality, right. uh, very knowledgeable people around. Absolutely. They have uh, a primatologist that is on staff with us, and um, they le give lectures the night before you're actually going to encounter the animals, and um, you, you learn quite a bit about it. Yeah. I think of those great pictures you brought back, and, and, and one of them I, I remember of that elephant, one of the last things we saw in the uh -huh. last clip with the ears out. Right. Now, does that mean that they're about to charge or do they just put their ears out sometimes? I think, I think that does mean there's one uh, in there where there's a, a smaller elephant and he's kind of learning uh, what he's supposed to be doing and, and you can see him put his ears out. And yes, that is, that is, uh, they're indicating to us, it's kind of, they're bluffing in a lot of respects. Yeah. They're not going to charge, but they want you to think that they are. So that's kind of the, the first sign is right. what I've heard of. You probably don't want to get closer when right. you see that, and you might uh, want to make yourself might back off a little bit maybe. Right, <laughs> yeah. They, they, uh, they, they just amaze me. I, I love uh, elephants. Now, the, uh, mm -hmm. now, one thing I've always been intrigued by, which was part of your trip, I've always been intrigued by gorillas. Mm-hmm. And uh, to see and hear them in a natural environment with their social groups, that must be a real quality peak experience that you had. Tell you what, let's see some highlights of great. that part of your trip, uh, that great travel experience. Great. Here is the itinerary, the trip that my daughter and I took with National Geographic over the holidays in 2014-2015. In part one, I focused on chimpanzees in Uganda. In part two, we are going to focus on gorillas in both Uganda and Rwanda. We drove towards the Congo border as we started the second half of our trip. Our next stop was the Bowindi Impenetrable National Park. That's a tongue twister. We traveled through the remote southern section of the Queen Elizabeth National Park, known as Ishasha, the same name as the river that runs along the border with the Congo. There are less than 900 mountain gorillas left in the wild. This is such a tragedy. 
Mountain gorillas live in groups of up to 30. The group or troop is led by a single alpha male. These males are called silverbacks because of the silver stripe they develop on the backs when they mature. The oldest males of the group are at least 12 years old. In addition to providing protection to group members, silverbacks maintain order and decide all the activities within their troop. They schedule feeding trips, resting time, and travel. They also father the majority of the young in the group. Aside from the silver stripe on their backs, male mountain gorillas are distinguished from females because they have a crest of fur on their heads. Both genders have similar thick black hair covering their bodies. This thick hair keeps them warm in cold mountain temperatures. Female gorillas can produce young beginning at age 10. They carry one or two babies at a time and give birth after an eight and a half month gestation period, very similar to human beings. In general, they will bear between two and six offspring in a lifetime. Newborn gorillas weigh about um, two pounds at birth. They are as weak and uncoordinated as human babies. For the first four years of their lives, they get around uh, by clinging to their mother's backs. And by three and a half years of age, the young gorillas are fully weaned from their mother's milk and start the same diet as mature mountain gorillas which are plants, leaves, roots, and shoots. And these are the trackers that joined us. As I mentioned earlier, there are three groups of habituated mountain gorillas left in the world. The group that lives in the Bowendi National Forest is the Rushagura group. Each of the gorillas are named and monitored on a daily basis. It's not only a conservation issue of ensuring the existence of an endangered species. It is also essential to the livelihoods of thousands upon thousands of people. Tourism is the main industry of this area. We hiked for about three hours and suddenly the gorillas appeared out of the forest. Let's take a listen. There are males, females, juveniles, babies, and the leader, the silverback. Almost silent, they lay on the ground, seeming to be recovering from some strenuous activity. Other than looking for food or finding a place to sleep, they just relax, unless they are attacked by poachers, which sadly happens. The poachers are looking for baby gorillas to traffic. The adults will fight to the death to protect their young. We are only allowed to stay 30 minutes. Other groups have already been observing and others will come later. These gorillas are habituated to humans seeing them every single day. There are other groups that have no human contact and only are observed by workers making sure that they are not in danger. 
They live much higher up in the forest and deeper into the Congo, where sadly to say, a civil war has raged on for decades. Now recently I heard about tours that allow small groups of only up to maybe four people plus the guide to observe up to one hour. Of course, this opportunity would cost substantially more than the experience that I had. We quickly discover the gorillas. We find them sitting together under the trees. Now look at the lashes on this juvenile. This gorilla is building a nest in a tree. Then you can see the finished nest. They sleep up off of the ground. Now I love this picture. He looks so calm and peaceful. He is a silverback. He's like sunning himself. Look at these infants. They're so adorable, all fuzzy and wide-eyed. They stay very close to the adults. 